microphone here, testing the microphone. In today's gospel reading, Okay. Good morning and welcome to worship here on the 19th Sunday after Pentecost and a special welcome to visitors who are with us if you're here for the first time or you have not done so yet, we encourage you please to sign our guest book and to join us afterward for coffee downstairs. We'd like to get to know you better. Just a couple of things to highlight. Uh, during our worship service today, there are prayers that are, uh, we are using with permission from Together Here Ministries. And so uh, they are part of uh, the observance of Indigenous Peoples Sunday. And so, uh, and throughout our synod, that is being encouraged. And so, again, we are pleased to, to uh, do that this year. Um, you are invited also to take part in different activities throughout the week. We have Bible study on Tuesday and also Thursday. We have a, um, a two book discussion groups that are meeting, one on Wednesday evening on Zoom and one in person at Sarah's table on Thursday morning, Earth Harmony. Um, there's also tonight uh, two different opportunities. There's an interfaith community for migrant justice potluck happening at Trinity Lutheran just up the hill. And uh, there's also a life group meeting, Lester Park and Lakeside life group meeting. Um, that's in person in the lakeside room downstairs, but it's also, uh, it can be on Zoom as well. If you would like to be part of some of these things afterward, uh, and you want to know more about them, just let me know. Also, this coming weekend, um, there is a synod-wide gathering happening in Grand Rapids called Walking Together. It's showcasing different ministries around our synod with different workshops and uh, one in particular that's happening there is a, uh, bringing together racial justice groups from around our synod. And uh, if you are planning to go or would like to go to that, please let me know. Some representation is being requested by Gloria Day. I will be at that event, but uh, it's uncertain whether I'm going to be doing a workshop, leading a workshop at the the same time as that. So if you are, uh, could, could go to that, let me know and would like to be part of that. Also on Saturday, there's another important event happening here. Uh, Gloria Day's men's ministry is uh, serving up the hill that way, up at uh, the, the uh, family freedom farm and uh, grilling hot dogs and hamburgers at the big tent event. That is a free event, and uh, so thanks to all those who are going to be part of that serving up there. Um, and then also this week, there is on Wednesday at 10 o'clock here in the Narthex, but also on Zoom, a time to listen. And that is our regularly monthly uh, mental health moment. Uh, and so Greg Turinetti is the facilitator of that, and all are welcome into that conversation as well. A um, couple other events that are highlighted on the back page, an Allworth lecture happening at UMD, 
and also a Sixth Avenue East input session on October 12th. That's Thursday. So those are some things to just take note of as you're reading these announcements and uh, can take part. I hope you can take part in them as well. Finally, we are glad you're here. Wherever you are on your journey, you are welcome at Gloria Day. We begin our worship with the gathering prayer and the prelude. Let us pray. Merciful God, you knit your people together in one communion through our baptism into Christ and the presence of your Holy Spirit. Unite those gathered here with all who are participating through radio and video that we may as one glorify you in our worship and service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We begin by acknowledging that we live, work, and gather on traditional lands of the Ojibwe, Dakota, and other nations whose people knew and know this land by other names and who have been its stewards far longer than those of us whose ancestors journeyed here across oceans. As people of faith, we confess that this land was acquired by violence and deception, and we grieve the harm done to indigenous peoples through colonization and genocide, displacement and intergenerational trauma. We also acknowledge the sin of racism and prejudice against people of African descent, the, violent, the violation of God's intentions in the institution of slavery and white embodied privilege. And we lament all structural racial inequities that persist today. As people of hope, we seek a future of healing and repair, and we commit ourselves to ways of listening, repentance, and working together for justice. The Spirit of God, the Creator, and of Jesus the Christ be with you. Come, let us worship our Creator with hearts now open to all peoples hearts where pride and prejudice once dwelt. Let us, uh, Creator, with minds open to the wisdom of native peoples, where listening and respect once had no place. Let us honor the one who freely gives to all by showing honor to those who were once and still remain oppressed. Let us worship the God of diversity who made the world in colors, in seasons, in endless variety, 
who created all the earth's peoples in God's own image. We were created to honor one another, and in so doing, we honor the Creator. Let us honor God by reflecting the Creator's love in our worship and in our lives. Amen. Amen. We face the processional cross for number 837, Many and Great. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. Creator God, to you we give thanks 
in all you bring and ask for your guidance as we prepare to open our hearts and minds to your presence. Within this sacred circle, Jesus Christ is the center in all we do. Help us to speak with honor and respect to all people and be open to the teachings we are given. As we walk this sacred journey together with our relations, open our eyes to understanding and give us the strength to truly see the way to live with compassion, love, and grace. For with your spirit, we can face the winds together. Amen. You may be seated, and we invite all the children to please come forward. Hello. I'm going to be over here, so you can... Come on down. This is a special day today. Well, every day we come to worship is a special day, isn't it? Sunday. But we do worship God all the time. But I, this is also a day when we're going to be talking about people who are, we call them indigenous. And that's kind of, that means that they are here. They're part of the land. They're part of this place. Pastor David acknowledged that we're living on land that used to be populated by many, many Native people. And so we just need to remember that. Sometimes we think that people from Europe were the first people here. When I was a kid, we used to have Columbus Day. And that would be a holiday that we would remember Christopher Columbus because we thought at that time, if we sang a song about Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and in 1492, that meant that he found this land. Well, that's not true. The land was here. And he didn't find it. It was already here, and people were living here. And even more than that, he wasn't the first Europeans on this land. We remember the Vikings, don't we? They came here also. So that's the truth. The truth is that there were people in this land before Europeans came and before they brought other people here, whether they wanted to come or not. Anyway, I was going through the children's library up there. I think a lot of you know where that is. You know, it's at the top of the stairs here, and there are lots of different books there that kids can read and adults because they're very good books too. But anyway, here are some of them that have to do with that theme. One called the first strawberries. One called Mashikiki Road. I think we're going to look at this one in a little while. Water Walkers. This is a beautiful book. Beautiful book. Here's one called Josie Dances. Do you know what this is? What this dress is? It's called the Jingle Dress. And at powwows, young girls and women wear jingle dresses. And they dance round, and it's very, very much an amazing talent that they have. Here's another water protector one, because we're reminded many times by our Native relatives and friends that this earth needs protection. We talk about that in church, too. Here's one about fry bread. I like fry bread. Do you like fry bread? Yeah, it's got sugar on it. It's kind of like a, a deep-fried donut but bigger. Here's one about a boy who made a whirlwind. He was a dancer also. Those were special people with special talents, and they perform, and they, they do it to the glory of God. Here's one about Chief Seattle. When you get into school sometime, you might learn about Chief Seattle. He was one of the great chiefs in the... Um, Oh, quite a while ago, but he wrote a book, and it's, it's illustrated beautifully. And it's all about the earth and taking care of it. So these are beautiful books, and there might even be more, because I just grabbed the ones I could see real quickly. But I thought we'd talk about this one, Mashikiki Road. And it's about a family, some kids, and their grandma, and their grandma is like a healer. And one of the things she uses to heal, or two of the things, are sage and cedar. See, they are, they're, having, they're having lunch with their grandma, 
And she said, I've run out of sage and cedar. Will you go and gather some for me? And then they, they go out. The little boy's name is, where is he right here? Ogiyama. And his bigger sister is Ellie. And his cousin is Lily. So those are the names you're going to hear. Origama, Lily, and Ella. Ellie. And it starts with, Ogiyama, Ellie, and Lily each found a container to hold the, the sage and the cedar. And they set off on the Makishki Road. It wasn't long before they came on a path in the woods, and there they met a bear. Suddenly, Ellie stopped in her tracks. Makwa, that's the name for bear in Anishinaabe. She whispered, and up in the tree, there was the biggest black bear any of them had ever seen, a big black bear. And you know what? He could talk. He said, do not be afraid. I represent courage, one of the seven grandfathers' teachings. Even when you are afraid, it's important that you find courage to do what's right. Lily, she's the little one, spoke up. We need to find my grandma some medicines. May we pass? The bear nodded. His voice was in a low growl. Of course, have courage. Come to see me again someday. I get lonely in these trees. Goodbye. So they walked on further. And the three of them moved past the bear, and they walked along. And before long, they spotted another visitor on the Makishki Road. Look at that. That's a pretty scary fellow, isn't he? Looks like a, a yeti or a sigsquatch or something like that. So... They slouched there, and they looked at him, and he looked very sad. So Ellie rolled her eyes and so said, How are we going to get by? And Ellie was a little worried, but then decided to have courage. And they approached, and they called it a sabi. Ooh, he looks even more scary, doesn't he? Sabi spoke to them in a soft voice. Bouju, that's a name for hello. Bouju, little ones, you've already met the bear, I see, or you wouldn't have come to me with such courage. And Ellie spoke up. I'm going, he said, I'm going to tell you about honesty. Ellie spoke up and said, What does that mean? And he said, Telling the truth, not lying. And the boy, Ojima, Ojigaba, said, I was honest this morning when I said I was really hungry. <laughs> and Sabi said, that's true. Go on your way. And so here he is. He's got his pan on his head. That's what he's going to carry home the sage and cedar in. <laughs> so at the entrance of the clearing, they spotted another large animal. What's this one? A bison, or buffalo sometimes we call that, a big one. And the great buffalo bowed his head in greeting. Bouju, he said, are you here for medicines? He was surrounded by a lot of sage plants. Yes, we are. Remember to show respect, especially when gathering medicines. These are sacred plants. You should treat them with care and respect. So they said... Miigwech, which is a name, a word for thank you, and they went on their way. And they gathered all sorts of sage, but first they put down tobacco. That's a way to honor the earth, replacing something you're taking and recognizing that you're taking it for the good of, of people around you. That's why they just plucked off the things, they broke them off. They didn't take the roots out because they wanted it to grow back again. That showed respect for the, for the um, sage. But they still needed to find cedar. So they walked on further, and they came upon a wolf. 
Oh my goodness, a wolf. The wolf spoke to them, I represent humility. Having humility means not to be too proud. Well, Lily, the little girl, says, well, is it bad to be proud? And the wolf said, of course not. You can be proud and have humility too. Instead of only cheering on yourself, you should be encouraging others as well. So they walked on looking for the cedar. Soon Ellie pointed, spotted it. Look, she said, look. She saw the trees. Aye, it's a big tree. And they got close, and from alongside the river they noticed a half-finished dam. And here's another animal. It's a beaver. What do beavers make? Sam? Dams. They make dams. And they said to him, Hey there, who are you? Boujou, the beaver said, and he climbed down to meet them. I'm Amik. I represent the grandfather's teaching of wisdom. Wisdom. And Lily pointed at the dam. How do you do that, she asked. And he said carefully, it is my wisdom, the wisdom of the beavers to know how to build a dam. We all have wisdom of things that we personally can do. So they went on their way, because the beaver said he was very busy. And at the end of the path along the river was a small lake, and they stopped to rest only a little further until we find the cedar, right? They were getting kind of tired. Lily laughed. Yes, we're almost there. Then something splashed in the water. What could it be? A turtle. It's a turtle. And they saw the turtle on the lily pad who said, Boujou, what are you doing here? And Lily held up her bag of sage and said, We're collecting medicines for our grandma. And the turtle waved to them. They got as close as they could to come to hear what he had to say. And he said, I'm a turtle. I represent the grandfather's teaching of truth. But we already heard about honesty. Isn't that the same thing? And he said, no. We are very much alike, but we're different. Being honest means not to lie. Truth is about being genuine to yourself and to others. They nodded. They understood that. Miigwesh, they said, and they walked on to the cedar grove. Well, finally, they found the cedar, and the first they offered the tobacco. That's showing respect. And they began to collect the medicine. They worked until they had plenty of cedar for Grandma. They carefully snapped off the cedar, because they didn't, just like they did for the sage, they didn't want to hurt the roots so that it would keep on growing. And soon their containers were nearly full. Grandma would be so happy when they returned to her house. It was pretty late, and they were ready for dinner. But one more. What's this? An eagle, isn't it? You were right. Yeah, an eagle. A large eagle came sailing over, and it swooped down over their heads. And he says, Boujou. Good job, little ones, he said. Do you represent the last of the grandfather's truths, teachings? Yes, I watched as you met all of the others, and I want to make sure your journey was safe. I represent the grandfather's teaching of love. We talk about that in church, too, don't we? Yes, and that is very important. I'm showing you love by looking after you. It's time for you to go home now. So they hurried home. They hurried home. Grandma was waiting for them on the porch. Hurry up, will you? I'm, we're coming. We're coming, they said. And they gave her the sage and the cedar that she could use in medicines to help her neighbors and people who were sick. And they told her all about the the grandfather's teachings. The bear was so big. The turtle was so small. The 
eagle watched over us the whole time, and Grandma listened with a smile. She was so glad they were home again. And then they had dinner. This is a beautiful book, and we're lucky to have lots of beautiful books in the Native tradition. But it's a reminder that we're all members of God's family, and we need to respect them. We need to have courage. We need to be honest. We have to recognize the truth and the wisdom. And we need to know that we're being watched over by a loving God. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear Lord, help us remember that all of your children live on this earth. We're just part of the family. Help us respect them. Help them respect us and let us all go on without violence or fear or disrespect. Let's be honest. And the truth is we are on borrowed land. The whole earth is borrowed from you. And help us protect that. We pray this all in the name of the Creator. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, 
a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, and as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the, res- res- the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Let the good news come now, O God, not only in word but in power, in the Holy Spirit and with full assurance. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the third consecutive Sunday where a vineyard is a prominent image in Jesus' teachings about God's kingdom. The vineyard is both an ecological image and also a metaphor in the Hebrew scriptures for God's people. Jesus is clearly echoing Isaiah here. And like a neighbor of mine who spends hours in his garden, it's important to notice how much the landowner loves this vineyard. So much so that Isaiah frames this poem as a love song. And it's that love that we should keep in mind in hearing the Lord's heartbreak when the vineyard produces wild grapes. When instead of justice, there is bloodshed. 
instead of righteousness, suffering. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done for it? What more can God do to awaken us to the imbalances of our world? To the realities of climate change, for example, asks Lutheran professor Barbara Lundblad. How many forest fires and floods will it take? When we are witnessing violence and disharmony in the world, what more can God do to call us to create a more just and equitable society? How many marches will it take? God loves this vineyard, but God also has expectations. In Isaiah's time, as in Jesus' time, the bottom rung of the social order was being neglected. The poor, the foreigner, widows and orphans, all of whom are lifted up in the law and the prophets. So like Isaiah, Jesus brings a word of judgment here, accusing the religious leaders of ignoring God's messengers and endangering the whole vineyard. To those who would turn religion into a kind of self-promoting platform, those who speak pious words but turn a deaf ear to the cries of oppression and suffering, Jesus says the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces its fruits. In Bible study, we talked about how this verse has long been misused to say simplistically that the vineyard was taken away from the Jews and turned over to Christian tenants. But such a view is blind to the church's own failures and abuses throughout history and even today. So when reading a text, if we automatically put ourselves on the side of Jesus, then we have misread it. Like the Pharisees, we of religious and social influence should hear Jesus' words today as a prophetic challenge. How receptive are we to prophets today who speak out against injustice? When we e examine our own lives of faith, how are we stewarding God's vineyard, relationships with people, and with the wider creation that God cares about? How do the policies of leaders really affect those on the bottom rung of our world? The role of steward is important. But Jesus reminds us that stewards are neither fully in control, nor are they irreplaceable. We who would hope to be counted among God's people always need reminding that the vineyard belongs to God. And our role is participating in God's love for its well-being. Earlier this year, our Earth Harmony group read a book called The Archipelago of Hope, in which the author visits pockets of indigenous communities around the world that have experienced oppression, encroachment, and injustices, and yet continue to model a way forward for climate adaptation and resilience. Indigenous peoples inhabit 22% of the globe in areas where 80% of the world's biodiversity is found. These communities, islands of biological and cultural diversity in the ever-rising deluge of development and urbanization, are humankind's archipelago of hope, the author says, for herein lies our best chance to remember 
or to learn how to care for the earth in a way that keeps it healthy for our descendants. Those who have been rejected and marginalized are becoming vital for the future of the planet. And not only for this reason, but also for racial justice follow-through. More churches are engaging in the work of reparations, including our Northeastern Minnesota Synod, which last year, after selling some property, gave over $185,000 in reparations to the Minnesota Chippewa tribe. Repair is, first of all, about deep learning. Our Bishop Amy Odgren and Deacon Colleen Bernou said in a Living Lutheran article about it. Going beyond a land acknowledgement committing to relationships with people and understanding what would feel like reparative work for them. In the parable, Jesus names the tenants' sin, the beating, stoning, and even killing they do. And through his own life, death, and resurrection, Jesus breaks that cycle of injustice and violence. He exposes the domination systems that are prevalent in the world today and helps us to learn to read both the Bible and the news from that bottom rung. Leading the church to confess our complicity in such systems. To walk in solidarity with people who have been or who are being crushed by those systems and to work together in faith and new hope. Jesus saving life actually returns us to the love of that landowner again. The one whose great care is seen not only in his planting and digging and building like a master gardener, but also in his sending servant after servant, and finally his son, all for the vineyard's sake. We are tenants of God's vineyard, entrusted with a treasure, the gift of other human beings, and the gift of of the earth for a temporary time. And when we still see the injustice and bloodshed in our world, we can imagine God's deep sorrow and imagine our deserved fate in Jesus' question, what will become of those tenants? Death is what we expect. The crowd says as much, and the term wicked tenants often labels this parable. But then grace surprises us. It's there in God's continual sending, and especially in God's self-giving love on the cross for his beloved vineyard. And that grace supersedes whatever labels we may place on others or even on ourselves. Paul, the persecutor, realized this in his own life. It's that despite the violence and oppression in which we do engage, knowingly or not, God does not give up on us but continues to send prophets and witnesses, continues to send sunsets and birds and fall colors, and continues to give us his very Son in word and sacrament, freeing us from bondage to sin and death and enabling us to produce the fruits of the kingdom to participate in God's compassion 
and justice, to cultivate a world where there is no more oppression or bloodshed, where the vineyard of creation is tended lovingly, where everyone is valued and loved as a person created in God's image. This is how much we are loved by God in Jesus Christ. This is the cornerstone of faith and hope. So may this community, led by the risen Jesus, to live in the be led by the risen Jesus to live in the joy of producing such fruits to the glory of God and the good of our neighbor. Amen. rise with the whole church let us confess our faith I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. We give you thanks and pray for David, our pastor, Amy, our bishop, Elizabeth, our presiding bishop, this congregation, including companion churches in India, Honduras, Russia, and Tanzania, along with our RIC partner congregations of Messiah Lutheran and Baptism River. We pray for the staff of this congregation, this synod, the ELCA, and your whole church. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world, that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless fields and orchards and hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with the abundant harvest of good fruit. Lord, in your mercy. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom and integrity and compassion. We pray for all who suffer from the violence in Israel and Palestine and pray for peace and justice to come into that land. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all those in need. Today we, we mention the names of our sisters and brothers, Jim, Ruth Ann, Emily, Nancy, Anne, Eugene, Munda, Gary, Jeff, Joy, Bree, Lisa, Mary Ann, Myrna, Adam, Mary Ellen, Tom, DT, Duane, Pat, Sandy, Emma Rose, Paula, and all those we hold closely in our hearts. We ask your compassion and power in their illnesses to become healthy and save us in your joy. Lord, in your mercy. God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of the church. Build up this congregation as living stones, that it stands in community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. And we pray for your continued strength and assistance for all the organizations like Lutheran Social Service, CHUM, and Loaves and Fishes, that work in your name with the homeless and with families in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness and we wait with hope for the great day when we will join their voices in praise. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of Christ's peace. You're listening to a live radio broadcast from the Gloria Day Lutheran Church in the heart of Duluth's Central Hillside. Empowered by God's grace, Gloria Day reaches out as an inclusive, welcoming church through worship and social action. Today is October 8th, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you. 
pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome at Christ's table.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, our leader, you are the son of the creator. You have fed us at your feast. We are your children and grandchildren. You live in us and we live as you have taught us. Watch over us. Speak to us from the trees, from the grass, from the breeze, from the passing rain, from the rolling thunder and the deep waters. Allow us to walk with you a long life in happiness, completed in beauty. Amen. Amen. Great Spirit, Creator God, look upon your children gathered in holy community together and send them where you would have them go. Walk with them so that they may face the winds of change and walk the good road. Enlighten them, sustain them. May God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be to God.